Good evening. My name is Ildiko Zink. Okay, well, that's cool. Yeah. Nice to see you all, too. Um, will you just do me a favor and just, um, just pray with me? Just whatever it looks like to you to receive, just maybe you put out your hand like, you know, you learned in the 90s. Um, or just, you know, connect with him. But Jesus, I really, really want what you have for us tonight. What you put on my heart, I want to communicate clearly, precisely, nothing less and nothing more than what you actually want. And I just bless every single heart that is open to receive, that they will be forever changed, forever closer to you, Jesus. That tonight will be um, just another level of your, of your love, of your grace, and of your truth. Amen. Amen. Okay, so this is a topic I want to talk about before I read from the screen, um, the Bible verse, um, that really, it relates to everything. It, it, it is the most, I believe, as a Christian, it is the most important subject. Um, our salvation depends on this subject. And so, um, incidentally, in my life, I had the privilege to practice this for many, many, many years. Um, and I'll go into that in a little bit, but I want to read the scripture first. And I want to talk about basically how forgiveness is needed for our salvation. Okay. So Matthew 18, <laughs> 21, <laughs> Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he had begun to settle them, one, owed, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. But since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold along with his wife and children and all that he had and, and repayment to be made. Talk about generational curses, huh? So the slave fell to the ground and prostrated himself before him, saying, have patience with me and I will repay you everything. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion and released him and forgave him the debt. But the slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves, slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And he seized him and he began to choke him saying, pay back what you owe. So his fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him saying, have patience with me and I will repay you. But he was unwilling and went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what was owed. So when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to their Lord all that had happened. You don't think people are watching you, what you're doing to others? Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, you wicked slave, I forgive you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his Lord moved with, moved with anger, Remember earlier, he was moved with compassion. Now he's moved with anger. God got angry. Wow. Handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed to him. My heavenly father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. So had that last little bit not been there, it would have been great. It would have just been a nice little story from days of older and we just read it for historical context and maybe considered it, but that is serious. I'm going to leave that up to you, up to, up on the screen. I'm going to leave that up for you on the screen, please. Would you mind? Can we stare at that, please? Thank you. Awesome. Okay. So topic of forgiveness relating to salvation. What is salvation? We were talking about this in one of our meetings and Steve had asked the question, if you were asked, what does it take for you to be saved? What would people say? And 
a lot of people would say a lot of things, but at the end of the day, salvation depends on does Jesus forgives you? Do you have sin that's separating you from him or not? And you do not have the ability to cleanse yourself of that sin. Pharisees of many have tried. And there's another story in the Bible that compares a woman washing Jesus' feet with her hair, um, forgiven much and loving much compared to the Pharisees who thought they could get salvation on their own, you know, merits. And so, um, so we, we know that we cannot get rid of our own sin. We cannot get rid of our own transgressions. We need his forgiveness. We need his sacrifice. And we would like to put a period there. We'd like to put an end there and say, that's cool. He forgives me. I'm a good Christian. I'm going to go to heaven. I have nothing to separate from me from him. So I'm good. But this, yikes, what a bummer, huh? My daughter says this, this line, what a bad bummer. <laughs> okay. But it's not because there's such freedom and grace and you get to see the side of the father that's moved with compassion. However, if we do not forgive from our heart, and I'll go into that in a little bit, right, Chloe? Right? Yeah. There you are. <laughs> She's heard me say this is like my favorite part. Um, so to know a God who's moved with compassion rather than moved with anger, we have to forgive those who have trespassed against us if we want to be forgiven. So what does it mean to forgive someone from your heart? It's a choice. In this context, I'm not going to go into that. I do have time. No, I'm not going to go into it. In this context, it means a choice. To choose to not to do what the slave did to the fellow slave. Which is pay back what you owe. You owe me something. Maybe in your terms, nobody's owing you money. But maybe they owe you an apology. Maybe they owe you time. Maybe they owe you resources. Maybe they owe you a thanks. What is it that people owe you that you can't release, that you can't let go? Because you have to know why. I have to know why. Well, why didn't she say this? And why did she do that? And why did he look at me that way? And why did, why did, why did? And then judgment comes and all these things come. And what follows is torment. Put the one back before, please. The verse before, 34. And his Lord, who's like the king, who's like God, moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. So do you ever find yourself tormented by anger? Do you ever find yourself tormented by hate? Do you ever find yourself tormented by whatever else? Pain? I don't know. Sure, you have your own something, you know? Because I know I was tormented for a long time. Remember how I started with? I had the privilege to walk this out, to practice this. And I'm not going to give you specific, you know, this is what happened. But there was a lot, you know. I'm from another country. When I came here as pretty much an illegal alien. There was that. I was abandoned by my mom. My dad was an alcoholic. You know, um, I was adopted at one point. <laughs> um, betrayal, abuse. You name it, I was, I, I, I've, I've been there. You know, I really have been. And it's not fair. After all those things out to me, I was the one getting tormented. Right? And we think that. Well, it's not fair. Mm -mm. I shouldn't be the one getting tormented. They should be getting tormented. Right? We act like, well, you've done wrong to me. You should be in jail. I'm suffering also. I'm getting tormented. But you definitely should be getting. And we're going to be tormented together. Because what is more happier than other people being miserable with you? Right? OK. But we want to be saved. We, we, you know, Jesus save us. But we refuse to forgive. It doesn't work. It's like a, a math equation that doesn't equal. 
and then you're stuck and you're frustrated. You feel far away from him because now you're in jail, spiritual jail, mental jail, emotional jail. And you're like, but Jesus, I want to feel you. And he's like, you're just going to (laughs) forgive. But we don't. And, And I think one of the reasons we don't is one of the reasons I had a hard time with for a long time is because I had to know why. Why did this happen? Why did it happen to me? Why didn't nobody stop this? Why did I get the lottery of the, like Steve said, the lottery of the womb, you know? Why, why, why? You know? And when you can't blame other people, you start blaming God. Or you start blaming yourself. And you can do that to the end of eternity because he's not going to argue back with you. Because he knows who he is and he doesn't really need your approval. And you yourself are going to argue with yourself, but... You know, that's not a happy place either. So, and you can do that to the end of time. So we stuck in this prison of why, why, why? And we refuse to forgive. And then we blame God or why didn't he stop it? And why didn't you do something? And why did you give me those parents? And why did you give me those friends? And why did you put me in this place? We're focusing on the wrong thing doesn't matter why. Oh, what did you say? It doesn't matter why. How insensitive. It doesn't matter why. And the sooner you get to that answer, the sooner you'll find freedom. The devourer is at work. That is why. There's an enemy who wants your soul, who wants to destroy you, who wants to devour you. And he's at work and he's seeking for someone to devour. And if he can do it by keeping you from salvation, and if he can do it by keeping you away from Jesus, then he's going to do it. And he's going to do it any ways and any means possible. And if he can do it by keeping you in a trap where you don't forgive, then that's how he's going to do it. And that's the easiest way he's going to do it. See, we're really afraid of addiction. We're really afraid of getting in trouble. But this, this is really clever. Because if you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. And if you're not forgiven, you do not have salvation. So why? Because the devourer was at work in your life. And when you expose that and say, it doesn't matter why. Because... He paid for my sins. Therefore, I owe him everything. Therefore, I owe, I'm owed nothing because I've been paid by the utmost gift, by the utmost price, 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 price. Cool. Both that anyone could pay Jesus with his life. And we say that, I'm gonna get it wrong. I know I'm gonna get it wrong. I'm owed nothing, I owe everything, I deserve nothing. How does it go? Did I get it right? Oh my gosh, I messed it up in my head. And I get to work for him. And we say that, and I, I think we know what that means in terms of like, you know, time and money and selflessness and all that, but really, This is what it means. Salvation. Forgiveness. I'm owed nothing because my debt has been paid. I will not step into being the wicked servant of saying, thanks for paying for this. Now I get to have my cake and eat it too. And I get to be the angry little troll that's going to make everybody pay for their sins too. Okay? Angry little troll, not a cute look for a Christian. Not a cute look. Okay? And I was such an angry little troll for so long. I was so angry. So angry. I'm owed. I'm at least owed an explanation. I'm at least owed an apology. And I remember clear as day, I was one of my walks, and this was... A couple of years after I laid that down, I'm just like, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not owed that. I'm not owed that, Jesus, because you already paid for everything. So, 
you ever want to tell me? Cool. If not, that's fine. But it was one of my walks with him, and I was like, Jesus, do you want to tell me? You know, it, it's cool if not, but I'm just asking one last time, you know? Would you tell me why? That's what he said. Ready? Because they wouldn't. Because they wouldn't. Again, out of my control. Not my thing, but I tortured myself and my mind to have an answer for years. For the truth was so simple. Because they wouldn't. And maybe for your case, it'd be something different, but it's oftentimes very simple. And it won't satisfy you if you still just want payment. See, it's not the answer you want or a, a, a resolution that you seek. You want payment because it costs you something, because it costs you your time, because it costs your emotions, because it costs you, you know, maybe your body, maybe it was your mind, maybe it was, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, abuse takes, co costs many things for us, right? You know, oh, I didn't get to go to college. I was away from my family, you know, whatever it was, my time. It was my, mainly my time, you yeah. know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And if we are stuck on the why, we will never be able to move forward and move into what he has for us, which is a God who's moved by compassion a God we sing about, that he draws us close to him. And that's the God that I know. Now, <laughs> took me a little bit, you know? And when we focus on only what it cost us, we lose sight of what it cost him to be able to wipe that from us, to be able to heal us, to be able to deliver us, to be able to set us free. So what are you focusing on tonight? Or last week? Mm -mm. Maybe tonight you're cool. What about yesterday? What about this morning? What are you focusing on? What things have cost you or what it cost him? What he's given you, what the price he paid for you. Can you let go of payment? Can you let go of what you're owed so that you can receive what he has paid for you? Because again, and I'm going to reiterate this probably three more times in the next seven minutes, <laughs> you cannot have it both ways. You cannot have what he has paid for you and what he has sacrificed for you and what people owe you. And the deception that you can have it all, you can have both, you can be the angry little troll and go to heaven, is a lie. Is a lie. And not only for you, but for your family. Your kids are struggling. You are a product of parents that were, you were struggling, product of a parents, whatever. It's because it's not just you that's getting affected. It's your entire family gets thrown into jail. I said that as I was reading it, you know, talk about generational curses. And there's books out there. Many, 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 many books of how to break the generational curses and all the steps. And step one and done is forgiveness. You don't want generational curses in your life or to have an effect on you or to have an effect on your kids. Start forgiving. Start forgiving from your heart, from your choice. Not from your feelings. You don't have to feel it. You don't have to have a relationship with the people. You don't have to sing Kumbaya together and hold hands. But make the choice that you do not want, to pay, want them to pay for what they've done to you. You do not want them to suffer and be in jail. And be released from the torment of... <laughs> Stop it. Okay? And if you're sitting there and you're like, well, easy for you to say, your life is nice. Blah, blah, blah. It is easy for me to say right now. You're right. <laughs> it is very easy for me to say right now. It's the easiest because my life is nice. Thank you very much. And I remember when I was very, very tormented and I went up to, I went up to someone and I said, wow, I've never heard anybody have the same 
exact story I have, or even a little bit worse. What must I do to be free? She looked at me dead in my eyes and said, forgive. And I said, what? She said, that's it, honey, just forgive. I said, okay. <laughs> you know what you're talking about because your life is nice now and it wasn't before. So you know what? You must know what you're talking about. So again, it doesn't matter that I'm not where you're at or you're not where I'm at. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you, you can get there. I'm telling you that in order to have that, you must forgive. And now you get to decide, you know, you get to have a choice. In the next four minutes, you get to have a choice of whether you're going to do it or not. Are you going to stay in torment? Are you going to take the chance where you meet Jesus face to face and he's going to be like, I really, really wanted to wipe your sins away, but you didn't. You didn't. And that's going to sting. And I don't want to be in that place. I don't want to be in that place. So every day, every day, I take an account. Is there anybody I need to forgive? Is there anybody I need to forgive? Yes, after 20 years of being a Christian, I'm not above getting forgiven. <laughs> I'm not above forgiving others. Because I don't want what he has done to be a waste. I don't want his sacrifice to be in vain. Like imagine if someone just came and like slaughtered me in front of you, for you, like I'm doing it for you so your ankle's not broken anymore, whatever, you know, like whatever your ailment is. And you're just stood there and you're like, what just happened, right? And then you're like, now nah, I'm cool with my broken ankle. That was nice though. That was a Good movie right there. Wow, was it real blood or ketchup? But that's how we're acting with Jesus. That's hilarious. And in terms of an ankle, me getting slaughtered in front of you, but we act like that with Jesus. Oh, that was cool. Well done, Mel Gibson, you know? And then we go about our day and think, but I want them to pay. And then we say, what you've done on that cross, Jesus, means nothing. So how do you do this? Okay, a little practical tip. I'm going to wrap this up. So one of the things is that we do a lot is just, uh, you know, I forgive this person. I choose, to, I choose to not to hold what they've done against, you know, um, against me on my account or something like that. Anyways, basically not wanting them to pay, right? But there's a, there's a tool that I want to give you. In the story, the king names what it cost him. It was, you know, 10,000 talents, 100 denarii, whatever it was, right? And when we just brush over, yeah, I forgive you. But we don't actually name what it cost us. Not say, like, again, not dwelling on it and, it, and like, living, living it out in your mind. But just actually, like, I'm actually releasing you for costing me my time or whatever, you know? Costing me my body, costing me my innocence, costing me my whatever, you know? Like name it what you're actually releasing someone from. Because that's what Jesus did. On that cross, he named what he's releasing us from. Every sin was placed upon him. He felt every single one. Past, present, and future. So we don't get to escape that. We don't get to just, whew, I forgive. No, we get to own what we're forgiving someone for and say, I forgive you for putting me in that position that costs me blah, blah, blah. I forgive you for saying this and it cost me my peace, whatever it was, you know? And you can do that, spoiler alert, you can do that anywhere. You can do that at night, you can do it at morning, you can do it at Starbucks. You can do it at Subway. You can do it at Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> Just don't do it out loud. It's awkward. I wanted to talk about this tonight because it is the simple gospel. It is very important and it's something that we need to practice for the rest of our lives every single day 
and we need to get experts at this. I really, really pray that this will not be the last time you think about this or until the next time you hear someone preach about forgiveness. But you start thinking about this every single day like your salvation depends on it. Because it does. So, if you have identified (laughs) with the wicked servant, the one who's got forgiven, if you receive Jesus, you've gotten forgiven, and then went out and wanted and, and found someone that did you wrong and you haven't been able to let it go. You haven't been able to let go the need to be repaid. You haven't been let go. You haven't been able to let go what they owe you. Would you be courageous enough tonight and say, possibly so, possibly might be identifying with that. If that's you, do some business with the Lord. You know, the altars are open. Chloe is playing some beautiful piano music. And it's very important that if you, you, you have that, that you deal with that. Because I don't want to be morbid, but you could get hit by a car. It is south side walking to your car. You know, people are crazy driving down. You know what I mean? And I really, 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 really want to um, see you have the sacrifice of Jesus be worth something in your life. Okay? So I'm just going to pray over you. And if that's you, come up to the altars. We'll have pastors praying for you if that's you. Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you. That even though it's hard, it is so simple. It is possibly the hardest thing to let go of something that's owed to us. But by you and through you and through your Holy Spirit, everything's possible. Everything is possible if we seek you. So Jesus, those of us that have odds against our brother, will you give us the courage to let it go? To not need it to be repaid, to not make them pay. Will you speak to us? Will you bring into our, into our brains a picture, a word, a name, whatever it is, however you want to do it, Jesus. We give you permission to do it. Even if we've done it a hundred thousand times, if we haven't truly let them go, will you show us what they've cost us? Will you show us and walk us through that simple prayer of forgiveness of I release you even though you cost me this and you owe me nothing you don't owe me an explanation you don't owe me a resolution whatever it is Jesus will you speak to us thank you for watching the Father's House Oroville YouTube channel but don't stop there Please subscribe to our channel and help us spread the message of Jesus to all your friends and family by sharing our videos. You can also help support us financially by clicking the Give button. Thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you again soon.